Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law. I hope you are having a good day. And we are here with the latest update in the ongoing Amaya Cohen or Kuhn or Cohn or however she pronounces her last name situation. When we last left the action, we learned a sheriff's deputy went to her house to ask her to take down her Instagram posts. And we learned that she took it down and there was a division as to what happened, who said what to whom and when exactly what was said. So we're here with the actual audio of the events, the audio visual that was recorded on the faithful day in question, which is always a good thing to have when we have an objective record. Very exciting. So a couple of notes for the record. First of all, this was obtained from the sheriff's office themselves. I wrote an open records request. This was given to me by the sheriff. So, you know, either he doesn't know I said mean things about his deputy or he doesn't care or he follows the law. Whatever the case might be, this was lawfully obtained through an open records request pursuant to relevant state law. Second item of note is the first minute and a half is silent. That is because it is silent in the original. Apparently the officer didn't turn on his mic for the first minute and a half. So we're going to listen to the first minute and a half of absolutely nothing but we're going to listen to it anyway so that we get the full record and third of all the audio has been improved enhanced by me the original audio was left a lot to be desired it was mono channel and had a lot of background problems and so forth and so on so i have modified the audio to try to enhance it and make it better it's it is a lot better than it was let's go with that you know there, there are definitely some audio problems but it has been improved so the audio, although it is, you know, original in the sense of being all of it, it has been modified to enhance the vocal range. Very exciting. So all that, you know, you now know for the purposes of that, that, you know, there you go. I just mentioned this in case it ever comes up that you now know the audio has been modified by me. So we're going to listen to this and comment along the way. I tried to transcribe this thing. Uh, this is a personal note. I originally got this like on Tuesday or Wednesday. I forget exactly when I got this, but I got it on Tuesday or Wednesday and I scheduled it for 48 hours later because I sent it off to Fiverr to have someone transcribe it for me. It was supposed, the transcript was supposed to be made available to me about seven hours ago. That didn't happen. And so I'm a very sad Uncle Blackleaf. For I do not have a transcript. I tried to go in and, ma and change the transcript manually to change it so that we'd have it. But it's just too much stuff. It's a half hour worth of video. It's too much for me to do. So I either could delay the stream until Monday or we could do it now without a transcript. So I went with option B. We're going to do it without a transcript. So here we go, guys. Let's get started with this thing. And as I said, there's no audio for the first minute and a half, so we're going to be here just listening to nothing for a minute and a half because there's no audio in the original. So we see we see uh, the sheriff's deputy walking up to the front door of Amaya's home. Very exciting. Knocking on the door. Very formal. His camera's a little crooked, I think. We see the door open. Now, according to the depositions, or at least one of them, Amaya, I think, opened the door. We can't really see it in this angle, but I think according to at least one of the depositions, Amaya was the one who opened the door and then went to get her parents. And now her father has stepped out with what looks like a cigarette in his mouth. Okay. Okay. So that's where the audio picks up. So there was really nothing that happened in the minute and a half worth of audio. You know, pre pre presumably, we're going to just presume that when he knocked the door, he didn't yell at her, take it down right now or else, you know, because we didn't we didn't see anything that was a reaction like that. So we'll just assume she came to the door and said, I'll go get my parents. And he came out and that there's nothing in this minute and a half that will change our legal analysis. I think that's a reasonable assumption. You know, although technically anything could have happened, if something 
you know, nothing, if something else had happened, we would have seen a different reaction, right? He come up very casually and likes a cigarette. So we're just going to assume she came to the door. He said, I'm, I'm deputy so-and-so. She said, I'll get my parents. And he stepped outside and there was nothing else of meaningful conversation, which seems pretty, pl pretty plausible. We'll give this one to the police. All right. All right. Let's carry on. That is so quiet. Let me see if I can make it a little louder for you guys. Oh, you guys can't hear anything. That's even worse. Hold on. You guys literally can't hear anything because I changed, forget, forgot to change the audio source. Sorry. It does that sometimes when I forget to change the audio source. You guys can't literally hear anything. That's yeah, really quiet. It's so quiet you can't hear anything. She had maybe, thought maybe she was having the COVID stuff and had gotten tested. Yeah. Does that sound right? Well, no, here's the problem. Uh, we were on the phone. Uh, what is today? Today's Friday. Friday, yeah. She just got out of the Children's Hospital yesterday. Okay. Yeah, yesterday I had to go. Yeah, yesterday I went up to the Children's Hospital. They went back into the ER Wednesday, so Sunday is when this all started. Okay. <coughs> um, on Sunday, she was diagnosed, which is not a confirmation. It's not a positive test. It's a doctor saying he believes. I get the paper for you. Sure. But it's a diagnosis that the doctor believes she has. Now there, in case you didn't hear it, he said, let me get the paper for you. So he said, he said, here's the thing. There was this diagnosis issue. Let me get the paper. So, you know, it, one of the com one of the things we saw in Amaya's version of events is that he that they offered to get the paper and the officer said no. But here he is right at the top saying, I'm going to go get the paper for the paperwork for the officer uh, to show what the hospital said. So he said that under his breath. But, yeah, that's what he said. I'm going to go get the paper. Sure. sure. Well, at least that's what I heard him say. Let me clarify, because there's no official transcript, right? So that's what I heard him say as I was doing the audio edit. He didn't say, let me get the paper. So as far as I could determine, at least. Okay. So um, on Sunday we took her and she's having a lot of problems breathing. Uh, she had a fever. Uh, and a, a dry cough, and they diagnosed her as having COVID-19, and they marked off the paper that she'd been diagnosed with COVID-19. Now, this is not reportable to the CDC, sure. because it is not an actual confirmed test, sure. because they didn't test. And so it's the doctor's best guess. So this is all in line with what we saw in the initial complaint, right? There was no official test. So he said, well, this isn't reportable to the CDC. I don't know why he's saying that. I don't know. But I guess he's using it. I don't know if he means that in in a in a real sense of someone told him that or if he's just using that as more of a euphemism of you can't tell the CDC because it isn't confirmed. I don't know what sense he's using that phraseology, but he's using that phraseology. It's not something you can tell the CDC because there was no test which there wasn't, at least initially, because at the time we saw this in the initial complaint, and he's going to get into this a little bit later in less formal language because his lawyers dressed up for him. Um, but the, the formal version is because the testing protocol at the time wouldn't allow for it because tests were relatively rare and so forth and so on. He has some thoughts he'd like to share about that, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So they do report it to the county. And what was the county nurse talked to you on Wednesday when you were on your way back there, or Tuesday when you were on your way back there to me? I think so, yeah. When she was in, uh, so anyway, she, we took her back to ER, 
the portage and because you'd have more problems uh, the, the uh, breathalyzer or the inhaler. inhaler wasn't working for her uh, she was getting a fever again when they took her in down there they did a, a blood lab and found her white blood cell count was low okay. and apparently this stuff eats white blood cells like they're from some vitamins so it kind of went it's not unusual for diseases to cause white blood cell manipulation, as you might expect. Some diseases cause it to run high and some diseases cause, cause it to run low. It's not unusual after a ailment that your blood count is, your white blood cell count is low because it's been depleted through the illness. So white blood count was low, indicative that she fought off something plausible. Hand in hand with this diagnosis, they believed that uh, she still had it, and ambulanced her to Children's Hospital at UW, uh, where she did get tested, and then the test came back negative Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday. Thursday morning. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but they're doing their own testing. It I was waiting for someone to do it, Tater. I was waiting for someone to do it. I knew it was going to happen. Congratulations, you win the prize. The in-house at the hospital. Right. They're not sending... <clears throat> Everything like what's being reported to everybody. That the it to the state lab. Yeah, the, the state lab that is supposed to be in charge of testing and reporting and, and uh, figuring out negative, positive, and then reporting if necessary. That's what we've been listening to from the governor and the Department of Health and everybody saying that the state lab is not got certain ingredients that it needs to do the testing. That's why they're only testing so many. Sure. Test. Uh, uh, so there he's saying that the, the, the way these, uh, at least the way he was told this is supposed to be done, is it's supposed to go off to the state lab for testing, but the state lab doesn't have the ingredients to do the tests, which sounds totally plausible to me, given what we know. Remember the time period that this is happening in, particularly, right? And he's also saying, so he's saying that the individual hospital is the ones doing the test, to the extent they are. Seems plausible. But he's given a he's given a very fair recount of what happened. Officer said, we went down to Florida, here's what happened. You know, we we went to the first hospital, they diagnosed this, we went back to the hospital after the the, the inhaler didn't work. You know, they wrote these things down, they did these tests, blah, blah, blah. Great. So this is all in line with what we saw in the initial complaint. So far so good. So, so she tested negative and then comes yeah, home. Yeah, she tested yeah. negative and then came home yesterday. Okay. So now they said because they believe that she could have possibly had COVID because there's no way to prove it. But since we have that, they want us to stay continuing on with the two-week quarantine from last Sunday. Sure, I understand. So that's where we're at with this old damn mask. Okay. So I guess the reason I'm here. Okay. Um, you guys. So four and a half minutes into this, the, here's the reason I'm here. So all he said initially was, your daughter went to Florida, right? And he went into a long recitation of exactly, basically the entire fact pattern. So he laid it all out for him and he even came with the paperwork in that time frame. So not the first time he's told this story, I'm guessing. He's been through it a little bit. So someone comes to investigate, he's like, okay, here, let me just tell you, let me give you the three, set, three minute story. Here's all the things that happened. Okay, so now he's going to get into the reason he's here. Let's learn about the reason he's here. We're in contact with the health department, you said. Um, Amaya has posted on Facebook that she has beat the COVID-19, that she was you know, infected and has now beaten it. So. Well, that's what they're telling you. <laughs> well, but she tested negative. So. Well, she, okay. It, it wasn't like she tested positive, was in the hospital like all these other people were, and now it's finally been released, you know, after well, being on... I really don't want to get me going on this stuff because that shit right there, had they tested her blood on Sunday, like they should have, they didn't do any blood labs. I have no idea what those suspiciously gunshot-like sounds are in the background. It's Wisconsin, take your own guess. This is, this is just a doctor coming in, listening to her lungs, looking at what the triage nurse said, I think you got COVID-19, here, take this. And if you look carefully, work release form, mm -hmm. really, a bunch of bullshit. 
Right. So, so he hands him the work release form, and we saw this as an attached exhibit. So the work release form actually does use the word COVID. And it seems pretty plausible. So he hands he hands in the form. Form says COVID. We know that because it was attached to the complaint. So we know what it says because we've read it. Knowledge is good. But because that's the way they're doing this, there's no way to prove who has it, who doesn't have it. So this was, hold on, this was on Facebook? <coughs> she don't even have a Facebook account. Well, I can show you that she does. Yeah. She doesn't. It's Instagram, but let's press on. Yeah, please do. Um, she actually just got her phone back because she went to Florida on a trip. So, so I guess the concern that we have is now parents whose kids were in Florida have seen this because of their kids, and now they're calling the school. You've already called the school. Just let me talk. They're calling the school saying, bitching, why aren't we being notified? The kid's posting that they had COVID and that they've now beaten it, yada, yada, yada. All I'm here for is... Yeah, for what, for what it's worth, medical records are a classic hearsay exception because they're official diagnosis of a medical condition, not for the purpose of litigation. Hearsay exceptions when they're offered, when it's offered, not for the purpose of, you know, remember that song? Medical testimony, but not for the purpose of litigation. Yep, okay. Well, if she'll admit that she has this, but... What's the name on her? What's the name she's using? Amaya Cohoon Warner. Oh. That's Facebook. That's what I'm being told is that this is a Facebook. That's not post. Facebook. That That's looks like a picture that she posted on Messenger. Facebook Messenger? Yeah. Well, she doesn't have Facebook. That's why I'm trying to find out what account okay. she has because her email is going to be what is it? Uh, uh, Maya Cahoon wanted that uh, at the Facebook so I guess or whatever. The sheriff reached out to me because <laughs> the health department and the school has contacted him and said. Can you at least go over there? Can we talk to her? Can we get her to delete this okay. to stop the... And if you guys are willing to, could you put a post or what, wherever this is that, hey, Miss, sorry, I wasn't actually positive, you know what I mean? So well, we don't people know. can bring so it So we're not going to do that. So we have, the fir we have the first ask and the first refusal, right? So we have the first ask and first removal. Can we get it taken down? And if you're willing to, can you put up a post apologizing? He says, no. So we have the first ask and the first refusal. So the cop is going to escalate this. Of course he is, right? So he's like, "Could I'm just here to see if we can get it taken down, if you're willing to to put up this other thing. We're not going to do that. As a matter of fact, you are. I know that because I'm in the future. But yeah, we have the first ask and the first no. So let's press on. We don't know that. That she wasn't. This shit that they're doing right there needs to stop. Well, I, that's out of my. Not be running around diagnosing people with this shit, because that's saying she has it. So that says that she shows symptoms of it. Yes. Right. Okay, those are totally different things, officers. That's saying she has it. Oh no, it's saying she has symptoms of it. You've, you, we're, we want to splice at that difference. You know, you really? That's what we're doing? No. Okay, press on. But you said the test results came back negative. For Five her. days later, when we had to take her back to the ER, she got ambulance to the Children's Hospital for two days. Right. She didn't get put in Children's Hospital because she didn't have it. They believe that she had it. She just tested positive by the time somebody got off their ass and actually tested her. Okay. That's what this is all about. What you guys don't know, what nobody knows, is this shit that's going on with the medical facilities, diagnosing, there are thousands. I was in the ER last Friday, a week ago today, in Bearable. Three possible COVID cases come in. The only reason that I know this, they've got to close my door, and I heard everything going on at the nurse's station. I was right in front of it. Three possible COVID cases. They heads up, got COVID case, triage, get the room ready. They put them in there. Three of them, all within 15 minutes of each other. Listening to these fools out there, can't do tests. They're only, they're only testing. And we didn't know this at that time, because that was Friday. She didn't go in until Sunday. Claude Asher says false negatives, dude. I'm I'm not sure that uh, that this officer has heard of uh, type two errors. I'm not sure that concept uh, has has happened. The ER story is the only people that are being tested are people that are in the hospital. These are the only tests that is going on in the state of Wisconsin. 
is that because we fought high and hard with them to get her tested. The only tests right. that are being done. So what? So for whatever it's worth, we now have Amaya coming out the door for the first time at 9.05. So in terms of trying to figure out what's going on here, Amaya is now coming out for the first time at 9.05. So make, well, this is in the original, which I think you can see the timestamp in the original at the bottom there. You can see that timestamp. So she's coming out 9.05 in this interaction for the first time. So everything's happened to this point. Amaya, I think she opened the, she answered the door initially, but wherever she was up to this point, she wasn't outside. So she's come out. In the hospital. Like admitted to the hospital or what? In yeah. the hospital. I know, I know that, I know that's false because my wife is a nurse at Divine Savior. So I know <coughs> my first hand experience. This is what Divine Savior is telling people. Well, I'm not going to argue about it because I, I know my wife is a nurse and I know what happens at Divine Savior personally. And they are testing people that are not specifically just in admitted. They test people that walk in the door. They didn't test her. I, I don't know the circumstances that you were in. All I'm here I for knew what they told is us. to figure out what this post is about, I seeing she yeah. tested negative. And as far as we know. And we need to get it taken down. Well, at the Okay, now we have the second ask. We have the second ask. We need to get it taken down. Second ask. We need to get it taken down. Sounds a little more ominous than the first time, right? At least in my mind, sounds a little bit more ominous in my ear. We need to get it taken down. And now Maya's out there hearing, we need to get it taken down. I don't know, what, I don't know guys. Does that, does that sound like a request? Or does it sound more like a directive? Let's press on time that she took that she had tested negative or did you no. test negative at that time no i didn't no well <coughs> or was it? it says i'm finally home so you must have tested negative if you're finally home okay so she posted that picture after but she posted it. i don't know that that follows just for the record you must have tested negative since you're home i don't know that logically follows i obviously i i would i would assume that even if she tested positive, if she's okay, she'd still be home. So I'm not sure you're home, therefore you must have tested negative is a logical conclusion. Okay. Picture similar to that when she was in the children's hospital. So that's which one I'm trying to figure out if that's that one. This one says I'm finally home after being hospitalized for a day and a half. Yep. So I beat, I, and I beat the coronavirus. Right. And so am I, like I was telling these guys, why I'm here is because um, the post, and with you being in Florida and the other parents and stuff, it's got other parents concerned uh, that, you're, that you're saying that you had corona and that the parents aren't being notified. Yes, the, yes, the, 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 the thought that is coughing, but he's also smoking in the shot. So, you know, I'm just guessing it might have something to do with the smoking that some of the student that you're a student with other student you know what i mean well they should have been notified because they should have been notified. this is his second smoke by the way this is his second smoke we're 10 minutes into the interaction and we're on cigarette number two i just like to note for the record i yeah. talked to mr moody myself we talked to personally right. we're well aware because he's contacted the sheriff nobody gives a shit nobody wants to be the person to have the information available so the parents do call and say, hey, is there any other cases? Because if she did positively have it, we don't know where it came from. I could have given it to her. I worked at the casino. We didn't close down until a week ago Thursday. Right. I haven't had any symptoms. She hasn't had any symptoms. But when they're working at the gas station, we're working at the casino, it could have very easily come from there. Now, I find this to be very silly and ask me to be arguing about or even a part of the conversation and what is happening out here is happening and nobody gives a shit because we just want to talk about Facebook and silly little posts it because it's Instagram, upsetting by people. The way. Well, people need to be upset. They need to understand what happened to her. She was diagnosed with it and they're doing this to multiple people, thousands and thousands of people, probably. She was, in fact, diagnosed with it. Um, you know, the, so that's correct. I mean, there wasn't a test to confirm it, but it was a diagnosis. It's on the work release form. And she certainly believed it to be true. And again, even if it wasn't, you know, all that stuff. But let's press on. Three of them invariable that I know of. Sure. 
that they did not test, sit out there and listen to the nurses and the doctor tossing this crap around and the symptoms are there, I'd stake my career, I'd stake my license. They're going to diagnose them with COVID-19 and then send them home with an inhaler. No test. And you want to argue with me about your wife working there, well, that doctor trumps your wife as a nurse, and that's what that doctor's doing. Nonetheless, can we get the post taken down? Yes, yes. Okay, can we do that now? Okay, so can we get it taken down? And they say, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I, you know, here, here, here's your legal analysis on this one, guys. And we'll certainly listen to the rest of it. We got, we're only 12 minutes into this thing, but here's, here's, here's your legal analysis. Okay. She has both of her parents present during this conversation. So like, as far as the law is concerned, her rights are protected. Both of her guardians are there and the law favors, you know, the, the parents being involved as part of an interaction, as you might well expect. They're her guardian. And, she, you know, she says, can we get it taken down? And they say yes. So that's a problem. He had earlier said no, and now he's saying yes. I don't know why he said yes. He went on a long rant that was kind of unrelated to everything. And he just says, OK, can we get it taken down? which is less of an order than before when we said we need to get taken out. So as far as consent goes, you know, it's a problem. It's a problem. I, I think this is going to be an issue. He said we need to get taken down and they say yes at that point. So I think that's going to be a very big problem for Amaya's case, not to mention all the QI stuff that we discussed last stream. Her, her parents are there and are in a position to help her protect her rights. And only did she say yes. What it seemed to be is essentially contemporaneously, all three of them said yes. So, okay, that's a thing that happened. So, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I also want to take note that in terms of the official record of this thing, there has not been a response yet to the sheriff's response. They did file a motion for extension of time. And I didn't act, I saw that there was a reply from the judge, which I didn't read, but I'm going to assume granted the extension of time because there's no reason to. So they haven't responded. They asked for more time to respond. Whenever they respond, we will certainly read it. But right now, if I'm a Maya's lawyer, I'm thinking to myself, in view of this tape, mm, at the end, let's press on. Wait a minute. Why does it need to come down? What has been violated here lawfully? Because the okay, so they said yes, and then kind of took it back. So hold on, let's let's I I, I cut it off, and they said yes, and then she he said wait a second, wait maybe no. So okay, maybe maybe he's being a good, maybe he's being a good guardian and defending her defending her rights after all. So I'm sorry, I jumped the gun there with the yes yes yes, and I did my whole legal analysis spiel maybe too early. So sorry about that. Let's go back a little bit and watch that interaction again sorry <laughs> okay can we do that now wait a minute why does it need to come down what has been violated here lawfully because the health department has the information of her test results that she is not well, positive the information from when she was originally seen i guess you're not understanding me we're not understanding each other you're, the health department is well aware I do like that response. I like that response very much. It is, it is, it is snooty and uh, and and witty and uh, and 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 um, sharp in a way I like. He says, "You're not understanding me." He says, "We're not understanding each other." I like that response very much. Plus, plus ten points to Gryffindor on that one. That gets the Black Leaf seal of approval. You're not understanding me. We're not understanding each other. Excellent. Yeah. Aware of all the tests that's happening. That here. report got reported to. That result got reported to. The Richard, Department of Health. I, I don't want to go this far. It was as simple as me coming out here and just getting the post taken down and walking away. And I don't believe the post needs to come if, down. If I don't want to go this far, it's just as simple as me saying take it down and walking away, implying a threat implying a threat yeah and you know 
and and we'll do legal analysis part two. Legal analysis, legal analysis part two. Electric boogaloo. All right. So at least as far as the letter of the law is concerned, your mileage may vary substantially in the real world. But as far as the letter of the law is concerned, if you give the police consent to search, you can withdraw it at any time. So if the police pull you over and say, can I search your car? And you say yes. And then you say, well, actually, no, they have to stop searching. I, your, your, your future lawyer would prefer to not have that fight with the police. We, they very much prefer you just say no in the first instance and not have that fight. But consent can be given and consent can be taken away, as we all learn from when too many after school specials, if you catch my drift, right? Consent once given doesn't last indefinitely. Consent can, in fact, be taken away in the middle of the activity and has to stop immediately. Otherwise, it's a violation. Yes. So, yeah, that applies to police, too. Now, whether or not they will actually stop, you know, who knows? But by letter of the law, yes. So he said yes and then said, wait a second, no. He has the right to withdraw consent. And so now we're seeing the repercussions of that. So let's press on. Scroll that back just a little bit there. I guess you're not understanding me. We're not understanding each other. You're, the health department is well aware of all the tests that's happening. That report got reported to. That result got reported to. Richard, the of I, I don't want to go this far. It was as simple as me coming out here and just getting the post taken down and walking away. And I don't believe the post needs to come if, down. If it doesn't come down, the sheriff has directed me to issue disorderly conduct citations, if not start taking people to jail because it is causing a disturbance to the public. Okay, guys, that's, that's where, you know, that's where things go. Now, where Amaya is in this situation, what she's hearing is, is material to this because I, we need to make, we may have to roll this back and, and see exactly where Amaya is entering the shot and not entering the shot because yeah, if Amaya, Maya's doing what she's going to do, but her parents are saying no, and her parents have the right to enforce it. And now, after having withdrawn the consent, after having withdrawn the consent, now he's making the threat about arrests and citations. So that is coercive. So the earlier consent, I would think legally is no longer valid because consent given can be taken away. In the middle of the action or otherwise and it has to stop immediately and once it does and he's saying okay well consent no longer being an issue by the letter of the law again he's saying now i'm going to threaten you overtly to do it under duress so i want to go back and see if we can see where amai is and all this because I, I wasn't quite seeing that so i want to see where the physical interaction with that is so i'm going to scroll back about where we'll scroll back to about a half minute and see if we can see where she is during all this while we're listening. What has been violated here lawfully? Because the health department has the information of her test results that she is not they positive. Don't have the information from when she was originally seen. I guess you're not understanding me. We're not understanding each other. You're, the health department is well aware of all the tests that's happening. That here. report got reported to. That result got reported to the Richard, Department of Health. I, I don't want to go. What did she say? I can't. She, Maya said something. Uh, I, I, I want to see if I can hear it in my ear. Hold on. Let me see if I can hear what she said exactly. Hold on. I is well aware of all the tests that's happening. That report got reported to. That result got reported to. I think she says, hold on one second. It says, it's what I can hear. reported to that result got reported to Richard the best I, I, I don't want to go this far it was as simple as me coming out here and just getting the post you think it was the mother that said go inside you think it was the mother that said something to Amaya rather than Amaya talking you might be right hold on me we're not understanding each other You're, the health department is well aware of all the tests that's happening that report got reported to that result got reported to yeah, you guys are right. It's the mother saying go inside. You're absolutely correct. You guys are correct. It's the mother saying go inside. It wasn't Amaya talking. 100%. Okay, I'm on board. Let's go. Richard, I, I don't want to go this far. 
it was as simple as me coming out here and just getting the post taken down and walking away. And I don't believe the post needs to come if, down. If it doesn't come down, the sheriff has directed me to issue disorderly conduct citations, if not start taking people to jail because it is causing a disturbance to the public to cause them to call the school. Yeah, that's, once again, not really what disorderly conduct had in mind. Disorderly conduct is causing an imminent situation in a, in a in a physical environment where people's safety are being threatened from the what is occurring. The shouting fire in a crowd's theater is a pretty good example. We also saw you know people swinging punches or in Starbucks or speaking loudly or behaving in a way that's causing an immediate physical problem. And it's the the physical constraints of the doctrine don't really apply in this example, at least in this lawyer's humble opinion. And yell at the administrators because the administrators aren't telling them that this student is positive for COVID and this student was in Florida with their students. They can't anyway because of HIPAA laws. They can. Yeah, I don't, uh, it, the dad, the dad says can't anyway because of HIPAA and I, yeah, I don't, again, I don't think HIPAA applies in this factual scenario. I think there are exceptions to HIPAA, and I think this probably falls within it. And I seriously doubt the, the well, the, he did say that his, wife is a, that his wife is a nurse. So maybe he knows his HIPAA law better than I'm giving him credit for. I was about to say he doesn't know HIPAA that well, but his wife is a nurse. So maybe he knows his HIPAA law better than he, than he also HIPAA is not a state law, it's federal, but anyways, carrying on. $5 from Catastrophe. You're just a dog-faced pony soldier. How many push-ups can you do? I don't know, Joe Biden. I don't know. So, so it's just as simple as taking... HIPAA laws and tell them that they I guess if you know all the HIPAA laws... She's taking it down now. Very good. That's all. That's what I need. That's, so am I supposed to... She's taking it down now. So, yeah. Her, 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 mother, her mother is... Her mother is giving consent. You know, this is yeah. Mom, 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 mom here is undermining dad's position. Mom here is undermining dad's position. Oh well, pressing on. Let's take my post. It is after the threat. I I will concede the point. It is after the threat. Yes, that is a fair point. Pressing on. Down. No. I don't know what you posted. I posted just exactly what we're talking about that some ass bone diagnoses her with symptoms of COVID. Yeah. We get put, we get thrown out of our workplace and told go home for two weeks on lockdown. I think you're misunder misunderstanding the term of diagnosing and seeing no, symptoms. I'm not. Yeah, I think he has the better end of this. I, I think that he has the better end of diagnosing. Diagnosing, in my view, does not require a positive confirmation. Not for least the reasons that there were a time and a place in not that long ago when, you know, there were no labs to be had. And doctors still had to do diagnosing, notwithstanding lack of labs. And there are places in the world that are, you know, not exactly available for labs. So doctors still today have to diagnose without labs. Labs are very nice to have. They are not a requirement to diagnose. Yeah. Because you can't. If she wasn't diagnosed with it, then she would be diagnosed with something else. The diagnosis, that's just the sheet that he gave her. Right, yeah. the, the actual discharge papers on there are the diagnosis, her prognosis, and that is that she has COVID-19. Okay. This is a stupid ass work release deal that he gave us to take to work after we clear our two weeks bullshit. So there's a lot more going on. We got paperwork from the children's hospital that they believe that she had it, but because she wasn't tested for it, by the time they tested her, she was negative because she has had the symptoms. They went through her record. They went through both ER records from where she was there on Sunday. So I'm not misunderstanding anything. What I am understanding is there is a difference between some ass clone diagnosing that doesn't get reported to the state Department of Health or to the CDC. And that's what actually should be the entire issue. But we want to turn this into putting information out there to forewarn other people to it's creating a disturbance and you're going to go to jail.
her post is down. When he sees mine, you can come back and you can tell him it ain't coming down. You post on, you crazy diamond. Also, I'm posting because I can. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Also, I'd like to thank the sheriff himself for sending me this video, personally, who sent it to me. Thank you, Sheriff Conrath, for sending me this video under open records request so that I can make a post about it. You jackasses. Yeah. Thank you for responding to my open records request. You're still a jackass. Because this is bullshit. And that what may the be. What the is doing, what's going on, and the information is being kept from the people that need to know. This, this, this shit, this is horse shit. 1,700 people with COVID cases in the state of Wisconsin. Bunch of horse shit. Why? You got people running around diagnosed with it. Because it's their best guess and the lab doesn't have the stuff to test. Now UW is testing their own. We said, wait, wait a minute. It's all over the news. It's all over the governor's press conference. The, the, the Department of Wisconsin, Department of Health. They can't test. They can only test what everybody has been telling us. And the UW Children's Hospital said the same thing the ER said in Divine Savior. Only people that are being tested are people that are hospitalized in the hospital. People that are going to be hospitalized because you're not going to be hospitalized for COVID-19 unless you have extreme symptoms like she did that she got admitted to the hospital in Madison. And the reason being was because she was already there once on Sunday. They went along. Now, nowhere throughout this whole entire stay at the UW, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue. I'm telling too much. Sorry, I was throwing fire on blue. I'm not going to argue with the sheriff's department, a police department, or anybody else when we were standing there as a. A little interjection there. I assume he was talking back on his radio, asking for his location. He said, I'm still on root or blue or whatever he said, talking back to dispatch, presumably. Family and several members of our family on cell phones, on speakerphone, concerned about her and worried about her. And at no point in time did anybody ever come in and say, well, we, no, this wasn't a diagnosis. This was that she had COVID-19 symptoms. They didn't take her because she had COVID-19 symptoms from the ER by ambulance to the UW. That's serious shit. They were treating her as she had it. The UW says she had it. Problem is, they can't prove it because a test wasn't done. She could have tested positive Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And because she's kicking it in the butt by Tuesday, Wednesday, in the UW, could have tested negative. You can test positive one day, and if you're at the tail end of it the very next day, you can, you can test negative. That's what they're saying. Now, I will not stand there and argue with the sheriff's department over that. You guys want to know what's being done, what's being said? Be start talking to the medical department profession. Over, and I'd start to suggest you start talking to somebody other than your wife, because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, she is lying. Or... Ooh, okay. Pro, 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 pro tip to the wise. Pro, pro, tip, pro tip to the wise. Um, please, please do not personally insult the police. And it's probably advisable not to suggest that their wife is lying. That's probably not a good idea. Uh, your 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 future lawyer would like to rec recommend that in any future interactions you have with any police, please remain professional, and use terms like "sir." And if you want to say no, that's fine, but don't make it personal. Don't call them liars. It's not helpful. Just, just say no, sir. Or yes, sir. These are fine. Please don't call the sheriff's deputy's wife a liar. Great. Thanks. Pri yeah. The doctor is lying. Somebody probably, is lying. Probably because not. we were told by them. And when we went to take her to the, to the ER on Tuesday, instead of taking her to UW or to, uh, to Portage, we were going to take her to Madison. But her breathing problems were so damn bad, we decided to opt for Portage. When we called, because we had to call the COVID-19 hotline, and when we called and talked to them, they said, same thing that the ER told us in Portage. 
The only people being tested are the people that are in the hospital. I guarantee you at this point, the sheriff's deputy has long since stopped paying attention. He, he probably paid long enough attention to realize his wife has been insulted and then immediately stopped paying attention again. He has completely zoned out and is meditating right now. I'm pretty positive. He's thinking about like his next cup of coffee right about this point. It's like, why am I still here? Why is this happening? Maybe if I don't talk, he'll stop talking. That'd be nice. Oh, and also like it's just it's, you know, or in the alternative, he's being a really good policeman because if you are silent, people will fill the silence. People have a natural un unlike for silence. And he's just letting him ramble because God knows that suspects do this all the time. It's a classic police man, um, tactic for interrogation, right? Just stop talking. The suspect probably will. It's a good strategy. So either he has tuned out or he's just letting him rant and maybe they'll say something that will give him cause. You know, maybe, maybe at any point he'll start mentioning how he's taking cocaine for his hip or whatever. People say crazy things all the time. Yeah. The, the, the suspect is very often their least friend, their very least own friend. Admit it already in there. And they're doing frequent tests on them to make sure that they keep pe testing positive or keep, keep testing negative if they're testing negative. People that are going to be admitted to the hospital because most likely you're not going to be admitted for COVID-19. If you go in like she did on Sunday, you got COVID-19, we test you as positive, go home. Because your symptoms are not that bad that it warrants putting you in the hospital. So fast forward to Tuesday, they were, they did. Other people that are being tested are uh, medical employees or medical staff and employees of the medical field. Now here he's roughly correct, especially at the time that they gave the test, right? He, he's conflating a few things, but he's essentially correct here that at the time they were being very limited in tests. And at the time she didn't meet the diagnostic criteria for the test. So he's, he's, he's batting around some ideas that are correct. Still not good to call. He, he he said that no one who isn't admitted to the hospital isn't getting a test. And the sh sheriff's deputy said, well, my wife, who's a nurse, that's not true. People who aren't getting admitted are getting tests. So the sheriff's deputy was correct. He was correct. The statement that he made was, was absolute and wrong. No one who's not getting admitted. And he's like, no, that's not true. I know that's not true. And that's not what he heard, though. Right. And so then he said his wife is a liar. And then he said, well, these people aren't getting tested. Yeah, that's right. But you're conflating some of these things. You are talking past each other a little bit, but it's OK. It happens to the best of us. It's one of the benefits of us having the pause button and being able to watch several weeks after the fact. Also, if you're out there, Amaya, I just want you to know that despite whatever legal analysis I have, I think you got a rotten deal. I also think that these sheriffs suck. I think your school sucks, and I think the, the health department sucks. So I just want you to know, I think you got a raw deal out there. And I wish you the very, very best. And I want to remind you that you do have freedom of speech, and you can, in fact, if you're so inclined, say that the police are dicks. It's legal. So if that's your opinion, go nuts. So just an FYI. Civilian-wise, the public... The only people that are being tested are people that work in large factory or company settings, corporate settings, with large amounts of people that had not shut down. The other people that were being tested were people that travel regionally around the area from one area to another to companies to whatever their sales, whatever they're doing. Those people, those that was the list of who's being tested. Now your wife is saying that's so besides the fact that establishment can, is a liar. Can she bring her phone out and show me that she's got it down? <coughs> so now he's asking for verification. I'm not sure how you would show verify that by showing the phone, but 
Okay. How would he know that what he's looking at is what he needs it to be looking at? He, he knows... Well, he thought it was Facebook. So he doesn't... How would he know that looking at Instagram means it's been taken down or not? I don't know. But, Actually, if it's not there anymore, it's just it's not show up on your phone. Yeah, that's right. That's a it's screenshot like, that was emailed to me. I, I was like, yeah, how would you... <coughs> iPhone. I mean, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. Like I said, we are kind of failing to understand each other here. It has been completely taken down. If I wanted to, to do anything else, I would have to upload anything. It's been sure. completely taken and down. That's your. Um, no, it was on your Facebook your page. No, it was on my Instagram. She even told you. Oh, your Instagram. Okay. I was told it was your Facebook. That's why. I... No, I don't have a Facebook. Okay. Can you just show me that it's your, like, account somehow? Um, yeah. yeah, for those of you asking about the warrant issue, again, with consent, you don't need a warrant. And so it's like, would you go get the phone? Would you show it to me? He, she, she he, she, he could say, no, I'm not going to show you the phone. And if Maya came to show you the phone, it's like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. He, because he can overrule his daughter, because he's guardian, right? He can overrule his daughter and say, no, you can't show him. But he's not doing any of those things. He's instead, at this point, cooperating. Now, of course, it's after the threat, after the coercion. We have already had that part of the analysis, right? But this is where this is where legal issues get tricky, right? This is where legal analysis gets tricky. And if you want to know why lawyers get paid a lot of money, it's because of this kind of crap. This is why lawyers get paid a lot of money. Because we have facts that go both ways. We have all kinds of timelines. Exactly who said what to whom and when and exactly what happened and exactly who was present and what coercive effect was present and whether or not those coercive effects would lapse and whether or not the guard is being present and blah, 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 blah. This the, trying to trying to untangle all this in this short conversation is a legal nightmare. And it's not untypical for them to be a legal nightmare. This is fairly typical. It's very rare for legal cases to be clean. You know, this isn't clean. You know, we had a threat, but we had some other stuff that happened. We had some we had some things that went in that went the other way. They went inside to a place of refuse, the home of special, remember? You know, all that good stuff. We had a whole delay, so there might be some there's all kinds of analysis here to be had. So was it you know, was it consensual? Was it under duress? Is the duress still valid? These are the legal questions lawyers get paid for. This whole interaction is a couple rounds of legal briefs to try to figure this out. If if you were trying to suppress it on the suppression issue. Now, we won't have a suppression issue because it doesn't really matter. But, you know, if you were going to do the suppression issue, this is why lawyers get paid. Because it's legally complicated and trying to figure out what, who said what to whom and who's acting in what capacity and when. Good times have by all. As to our immediate issue, QI is going to kill everything. So it doesn't matter. But if it did, this is where lawyers get paid. Who oh, won? Yeah. Is there any really? Okay. Yep, there it is. Yep. Okay. My photos. Yep. Oh, you're good. That was the username that was on the screenshot. So yeah. I appreciate you taking it down. Of course. I said I don't want anyone to get in trouble. It's just there's a lot of parents freaking out right now, yeah. well, so that's why. Be. And everyone should be freaking out, but not to the point where the district administrator is getting phone calls and yelled at and stuff well, like that. I don't understand so. why they're yelling at it because, like I said, the only thing that they should be able to do is confirm that there is a student that goes to Westville. So regardless of what, whether or not it's the Florida case, the, or, the hip or the hip not, the HIPAA laws are not. A student in school that is, po that is possibly positive most likely was. And you guys want to threaten somebody who's going to jail over it and add insult to injury after, I mean, this has not been fun. I do not want to be here for two goddamn weeks. I don't want to be here for another goddamn week and a half, but I got no fucking choice. Because I got kicked out of my goddamn job the minute I got this message. I got kicked out like I was a Mexican that came over the wrong damn border. Literally. I'm in the same boat. I was quarantined as well. My radio were picked off of me, set on the table, and told, get the fuck out, and we don't even want to see that you stopped at the gas station on your way home on our property. You want to go get gas? Go to Quick Trip. You ain't doing it here. I was quarantined as well. The, the, cop, the cop didn't exactly lie in his affidavit. 
I remember the affidavit well enough to remember what he wrote and what I'm seeing and what he everything the officer said was factually true. It was very creatively worded and very creatively presented as a good lawyer should. The person, the lawyer who put that affidavit together did a very good job. I can't remember anything in the in the cop's affidavit that was a lie in light of this in light of this video. That's just how good it's just how good it was worded. Yeah. And how good it was presented. You know, that's again why lawyers get paid. That's why they get paid to figure out how to write that stuff. It's a thing of beauty, man. What's lot to love? So, you know, now we got the health nurse, the Department of uh, Marquette County Health, when she called. <coughs> we got to get back to her yet and find out what's going on. We had voicemails for her uh, yesterday, I guess. Angie did. She's saying that the two week quarantine has to go from when she tested negative. Which would have been what, yesterday, right? Yeah. Yesterday morning? I left yesterday morning and ah. got home. Okay. So, this is not fun. We're not, happy. We're not happy with the Department of Health. I We're not happy with the state of Wisconsin with the way this is going. And like I said, people need to know that this shit is going on. And it doesn't do any good when you can't warn them when you got a sheriff's department threatening to throw people in jail over it. I'm just doing what we can do as a sheriff's office, okay? Well, like so. I said, I would time, love to time be able to, guys. to have you write me a disorderly conduct ticket and take it to court and get an attorney on it because I don't think he can do what he's doing. Because do you have anything else for me? you got to be able to cite a no. state statute or something. You can go inside and so you have to freeze. Disorderly conduct? I can throw a beer can across the road and you can cite me for disorderly conduct. Mm, I can run down the highway, I can run down the side of the road in my underwear. You could write me a disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct can be used many different ways. It's yeah. already been proven by the Department of um, or the uh, Supreme Court. Hmm? Supreme Court? No, the Attorney General from Wisconsin, when he ordered everybody to back off many, many years ago, back off the disorderly conduct citations, because they were getting ridiculous. Because they were. They were writing them for anything and everything. If I didn't like what you were telling me in a civil... That's interesting. So this guy knows something that I don't know from his state. Why would I know it? Unless he's referring to the, uh, no, he's probably referring to the AG of Wisconsin. But apparently people were writing uh, disorderly conduct tickets for all the stuff. And the AG at some point in the past said not to do it. Interesting. That might make it clearly established. Maybe Amaya has hope. Maybe Amaya has hope, guys. It's our first ray of hope. It's our first ray of hope in this whole QI nightmare. It's our first ray of hope in this QI nightmare. Let's go back and listen to that again, exactly what he said, because I want to catch up on this because it's our first ray of hope in the QI morass. There's a light, there's a little bit of light in the darkness. I want to hear what he said. Hold on. No, the attorney general from Wisconsin when he ordered everybody to back off many, many years ago, back off the disorderly conduct citations because they were getting ridiculous. Because they were. They were writing them for anything and everything. If I didn't like what you were telling me in a civil conversation like this right now, but I kept telling you, fuck yourself, go fuck yourself, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> you could write me a citation and arrest me for disorderly conduct. Not if it was just you and I. Well, sure it was. If you have, if you have lawful contact with me, I can't be a, I can't be a victim in a disorderly conduct complaint, so well, that's false. Well, okay, yeah, I yeah, I that's an interesting way that the officer is phrasing that because it's like if you and I were having this, then it would be. And he's saying I can't be a victim in a, in a um, in a um, in this kind of complaint because he's thinking about himself in his official capacity. But as we've learned from many many cases. Right. People are not actually in their official capacity all the time. We've learned about this many times. So like he's thinking, oh, if it were in my official capacity. But yeah, so if if we're in his personal capacity, then maybe. But so he's saying it's false. And I think, yeah, you guys are talking past a little bit of each other on that one. But 
I'd be interested to know exactly what the attorney general said oh so many moons ago, because that might be part of the QI analysis here. You know, the attorney general of Wisconsin can make the, he is the chief law enforcement officer of Wisconsin. So if he says, you know, stop doing this, and that's clearly established, eh, you know, it might work. There might be, there might be a ray of hope out there for am I yet, baby. You might have a ray of hope. Maybe your father's onto something. Okay. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I'm not writing you a ticket. I'm not taking him to jail. I just wanted the post to get taken down. So hopefully things calm down a little bit. All right. I get you wanted to inform the public. I get that. Yeah. But because in the same sense, it's it's, it's just creating a, a bigger deal. And well, I understand that when she true. wasn't positive, that's not, so and that's not what we're. That's but I mean, the, the intention of it is to get this out there because. I get it. There's a lot of this going on. Exactly what your wife is saying is being told to some people. Exactly what we've been told. And getting oh, told to I'm sure there's people. way more of that than you and I both know about. Now, so how in hell, how in hell can we be in a state of emergency and expect our governor to get all this information? Oh wait, we're not going. We're just going to diagnose cases and say you've got symptoms and give you an inhaler. Well, that's the other thing. Symptoms of COVID-19. Right now, the treatment across the board. Mm -hmm. Because there is no vaccine, there's some stuff that they want to test and keep track of and try, right. but those are only in severe cases. But right now, if you go to any ER, from what we've been told, you go to any ER with the symptoms of COVID-19 and the doctor diagnoses you as such, the treatment is here's an inhaler. And if you have any further problems, you get worse, the fever gets worse, if you peak over 101.5, or 101.3, whatever it is, they want you back immediately because they're going to do. They may not. They may not admit you, but they're going to start nebulizing your treatment. Probably put you on oxygen. Sure. You know, I get it. So and, you know, I'll let you carry on. So that's that's the stuff that that was our intention to get this out there because the other important thing is, and we didn't know this until she got down there to the UW. People that have been this diagnosed bullshit. Something that will go hand in hand with that because you're not going to get tested until they get this testing shit straightened out and they start testing everybody. Until we reach that point, if any doctor diagnoses you with COVID-19, I'm going to tell you this for your own safety and your own benefit so you don't do something stupid like we just did. Because we didn't find out about the white blood cell count issue going hand in hand with COVID-19 until we got down to UW the Hospital and they tell us because they had to give her medication to get her white blood cell count back up to help fight the COVID-19. The COVID-19, if a doctor believes you have it, all you've got to do is a blood lab. Check your white blood cells. If they're low, that you most likely have it without being tested. Yeah. You've got a you've got an educated, licensed physician, doctor telling you you believe you have it because of your symptoms. You've got a blood lab to back it up because this shit will, not only will it be low, if they come back in the next day it's gonna be lower and go in the next day it's gonna be lower. If the white blood cell count is low, that would be a good backup to the diagnosis. The test that takes three days to do. So. And, and then find out, well, not on the white blood cells, the white blood No, the test. actual COVID yeah, like test. Oh, yeah, yeah, the COVID test. Yeah. That, well, that's what I'm saying, too. <coughs> they, they swapped her Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. I think she got down there at like 4 o'clock, by 6 o'clock, 6.30. They swapped her. 8.30, 9 o'clock the next morning, test results were back at UW. Sure. Yeah, you know, that's why I say it. all this stuff that we know. Yeah, two to three days, 24 to 48 hours, possibly more. That's all coming from this client. That's all coming from the state lab bullshit. And they're telling everybody that all COVID-19 is being tested. Obviously, it's not. Right. You know, I mean, there's there's just so much crap going on that the public doesn't know about because, like I said, the COVID-19 cases that are diagnosed because of not being able to test or stringent with the testing. So I imagine they're probably coming up with all different kinds of stories to tell people. Why right. Not well, and it's all evolving day by day, hour by hour. So. But that's what I said. What people really need to know, especially a parent, is the white blood cell count goes hand in hand with it. Oh, Lord. I mentioned the white blood cell count thing a little bit now. Your grandfather, your grandmother, whoever it is, your wife, or yourself. Sure. If they're not going to test yet, but they're willing to diagnose you and send you home with an inhaler, ask for a damn blood lab and see what my white blood cell count is. Because if it is low enough, 
they don't get to get bad. Also, I'd just like to remark that they're standing pretty far away at this point, and that mic is still picking up that audio pretty good. Now, I did enhance the audio a little bit, so maybe it's a little bit from enhancing the audio. As I mentioned at the top of the stream, I did enhance the audio because originally it was mono channel because it's a microphone and there was some distortion and stuff like that. So I did run it through a processor to clamp the audio a little bit. But still, man, we're getting pretty good audio, even though they're standing pretty far away at this point. So good microphone, I guess, from the sheriff's office. Okay, carrying on. We still got another minute and a half of this. So let's listen to another minute and a half about white blood cell count. You know, they give you all the medication they want to try and increase your white blood cell count. It may not work. Right. And COVID-1, you're dead. Right. Just because you don't have the immune system to fight it. Right. No, I hear you. That was, in, in, in talking to these people, that's just like I told her, I said, well, you better call the school and let them know that, you know, that uh, they've got a student that possibly has it. Sure. And that's exactly what they were told. They were told that she was not tested, but she was diagnosed. You know? right. And, you know, like I said, now, if she wasn't positive, why do we have to adhere to all this quarantine crap? She's negative, so it should be life as usual. No, not according to the Department of Health. Yeah. Not according to the medical profession. Now, UW says we should be able to go from that Sunday onward to finish our two weeks. Sure. County nurse and Martha County is saying, no, I think because she was not originally tested on Sunday, we got to go with the testing. Well, I'm sure they're just doing that to err on the side of caution. <laughs> well, so. sure, but it still, it cost me five minutes. Oh, I, I hear you. That I don't really have. I hear you. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not trying to be an asshole to you, but I know you got a job to do, but I, I don't agree with what he's asking you to do. All right, very good, Richard. Thank you much for your time. All right, and thus ends the video. Thus ends the video. All right, very exciting. <laughs> thus ends the video. So yeah, so we've we've seen exactly the interaction that occurred, and I think it just goes to show the value of having webcams and dash cams and all that good stuff, so that people can see exactly what is going on in these things. You know, so I think that's really really positive. So we heard that and we saw a lot of legal issues announced. Now, I don't know if this father is misunderstanding the law or if he's remembering the law correctly, but if there's an attorney general's opinion from Wisconsin out there that has to deal with, um, you know, civil disobedience types of things and the infractions and when they can and cannot be written, I think that that'll be pretty interesting for that so yeah so first of all for all you who have been asking about the original video yes i'll make the original available but it is for our members only so if you're a member you can go to that link and you can watch the original 30 minutes without my commentary if you are so inclined so there's a link for you and i will be editing the description as soon as we're done here to add that, well, I can actually do it right what, right away. So let me just go in and change that. Okay. Video for channel members. And there's a link. Great. So all the all the members who want to, you can get a copy of that original if you want to. Nuvi gives me $20 to talk about Wicker v. Filburn. We will definitely do Wicker v. Filburn, and you will watch me go completely and absolutely insane. As people who may be not as familiar with the channel know, if for $20, I will cover any opinion from any U.S. court. So if there's a particular opinion you want me to cover as part of the channel, then if you give me $20, I will cover any opinion from any U.S. court. Obviously, I cover a lot of opinions anyway, but it's a way to help show support. And if there's something in particular you want to see me react to, that is a good way to do it. So there you go. And of course, for those of you who are new and may not be familiar with 
with uh, the channel, you can also join and hit the join button below. And it is, of course, always appreciate any super chats or anything that you give to help give some revenue. Thank you very much for that. Um, today's video actually that went up today was, I think it was today's video. No, it was yesterday's video. Yesterday's video was sponsored by a member of the channel. It dealt with the 3M earplugs incident. A lot of people were hurt by earplugs given to our veterans overseas, given defective earplugs, caused a lot of damage to the hearing as they were around, you know, really loud guns and explosions and so forth. So that was a video that was sponsored by someone on the channel, just like that. So we do these recordings and we make them available and it is always super appreciated. Thank you for all the people who do that. And I look forward to doing both Whitney versus California and Wick, Wickard v. Filburn, both were requested and will be done on this Sunday stream. Yeah. So if you become a member, it's only a dollar to become a member. Dollar to holler. One dollar. One dollar to holler to become a member of the Uncivil Law Militia. You know, we are going great. So we'll do a little bit of Q&A here at the end because I got 124 viewers. And I don't really feel like ending the stream. Quick question, could strict scrutiny limit the one purchase every day type gun laws? No, almost certainly not. Um, strict scrutiny is a really, really high bar. It, it, it requires a compelling gover governmental interest and the least restrictive means. I think it would be borderline impossible to get one gun a month to pass strict scrutiny. I don't think that would be the least restrictive means for whatever problem you're having to do. So that is, yeah, I don't think that's gonna fly. For Dred Scott, oh lord, that'd be good. Go back to Dred Scott. I should probably put out. I should probably put out some uh, some things of opinions I won't cover because I'm going to get myself into trouble one of these days. Uh, what about one gun every ninety days under strict scrutiny? No, I would have to say no. The strict scrutiny test is really really hard. Stephen Bartle said, sent me a tweet about a way to fix QI. Thank you. I don't actually check Twitter very much. It's mostly a platform just to make people aware of things. The posts that go up are automated. They're just a way to like alert people because a lot of people said they weren't getting notifications. So I created an alternative mechanism for people to get alerts of tweets. I think I did manually put this one up when I tweeted it, but I'll take a look at my Twitter and take a look. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Trudeau's gun ban banned a coffee company. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, you know, it was interesting watching Trudeau's speech where he delivered that gun ban because here's my question. How was it possible to act like such an authoritarian where you, by your word alone, are banning 1,500 firearms that were heretofore not banned and simultaneously, while doing so, sound so incredibly weak? The man sounded weak. He sounded so unconfident and so he said he had no it's no backbone. It sounded like he was asking for permission at the same time he was giving a command. He sounded so I have no other words for it except a weak. How is it possible to give dictatorial commands and simultaneously sound weak? I don't know, but Justin Trudeau somehow figured it out. Go watch that video where he's announcing it. He sounds so incredibly weak. It's an amazing thing to behold. Amazing thing to behold. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me that, oh, they bland the back rifle company. That wouldn't surprise me. That's hilarious that they banned the Black Rifle Company for their coffee. That's hilarious. That's really funny. That's really funny. Yeah. He he has he has not earned his father's name, is all I have to say about Trudeau. Five dollars. It's a rifle, not coffee. The coffee just shares the same name. Rather expensive AR for AR2. Okay, fair enough. I don't know anything about the Black Rifle AR, but fair enough. Shall not be infringed, period. Oh, divide states of America. Oh. Oh, we, 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 I don't know. It's one of these days I'm going to have to just give, uh, just put in one video. Like, it's the second amendment legal primer. I say, saying shall not be infringed really does not tell you anything. It, it's, it's, it's not the end of the legal analysis by any stretch. So one of these days we have to do that.
I've said I'll cover anything that's a U.S. opinion from a U.S. court. So if it's a U.S. court, Learning the Ropes gives me $30. Thank you, Learning the Ropes, for $30 Super Chat. It is super appreciated. It makes me feel validated inside. I feel validated. Learning the Ropes, Learning the Ropes is now the best chat participant because he's giving me the most. Yeah, so I appreciate that very much. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind covering a historical slave case if it's a U.S. court. If it's U.S. opinion from a U.S. court, then I won't mind covering it. I, I haven't read Dred Scott in forever. I honestly can't remember the legal reasoning of Dred Scott. So I'm reluctant to do Dred Scott because I'm concerned about the legal rationales of it. It would be interesting to cover it, though. Um, same thing with like going back and doing Roe versus Wade. I'm like, there's no way that that ends well. Trying to do that, trying to do that case. Can I do a vid on what constitutes a lawful order? It took two cases, just to order passengers and drivers out of a car. Um, that you know, I can't, I can't do that because those are asking me to do something that broad is is not really in keeping with what I'm trying to do. Like, if there was a specific case that you wanted me to analyze, like if you wanted me to analyze one of the opinions from one of those two cases, I'd be happy to do it for your super chat, and you don't have to super chat me again because you gave me $30. So if there's a particular case or a particular opinion you want me to review, I'll be happy to do it for the super chat. But when you ask me to do a vid on what constitutes a lawful order, that's asking for a lot of legal research. I'd have to go look at, I don't even know how many cases to try to do a complete theory. And it's not asking me to read one case and that's asking me to read 20 cases. And obviously that's not really fair, but if you don't have to super chat me again, if there's a particular case you want me to review for, I'll be happy to review. So that's fine. The 15th Amendment, uh, let's see, 15th Amendment, 13th, 14th, 15th. 15th is dealing with voting rights for African Americans, right? So 13th Amendment, slavery, 14th, equal protection, 15th is voting rights for black people. Yes. Okay. The 15th Amendment is unconstitutional, needs to be repealed. Well, that doesn't even make sense. An amendment can't be unconstitutional. The very point of an amendment is to amend the Constitution. How can an amendment be unconstitutional? That doesn't even make sense. So, no. No, absolutely not. Yeah, the two senators per state is the only exception to that in the Article 5. where you can, Well, it's it, technically speaking, it's that you can't deprive them of equal representation in the Senate. So, hypothetically, if you want to change everyone to one senator per state or three senators per state, you could do that with a constitutional amendment. If you want to give someone unequal membership, you can't do that without the consent of the state in question. Yeah. Well, the Constitution is unconstitutional. I, you know, I don't know what to tell you about that one. That's that's too, um, Dogbert Glover v. Georgia. I forget the state. Oh, I already did Glover v. Kansas. I did that case, and I thought Glover v. Kansas. Yeah, I did that case. I was very very sad about that one. So yeah, good times. Good times. So yeah, the Eighteenth Amendment for prohibition. Yeah, the pro 18th Amendment was repealed by the 21st Amendment. So the well, yeah, there there is an idea I have on uh, on using the 18th Amendment as a mechanism to legalize marijuana. I do have this legal theory that I've been beating around in the back of my head, using using the remnants of the 18th Amendment as a mechanism to try to uh, force marijuana to be legalized. I have an I have an idea. Um, if you're wondering how the 18th Amendment, which deals with prohibition, could in any way be used to uh to force legalization of marijuana it's it's a somewhat convoluted legal theory but i think it might work and since the commerce clause doctrine that people have been trying like for example rice versus gonzalez was tried to um do it through the commerce clause isn't working we need some other mechanism to try to do it so i have this idea for the 18th amendment that i don't know if anyone's ever tried maybe no one's ever tried it because it's a really stupid idea but it's an idea and you know, we're looking for something new, so let's give that a shot. Maybe that'd work. That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 Try to use try to use the remnants of the eighteenth amendment as a mechanism to uh to uh undo marijuana. That should be that'd be fun. Oh man. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh insightful Supreme Court cases coming up I'm looking forward to. They just they just decided the one dealing with Christie and the New Jersey Bridge. They 9-0 reversed the convictions 
uh, for wire fraud on those cases from the con uh, convictions dealing with the people who were doing Bridgegate. For all those people who remember during the election that they um, blocked a bridge to prevent people from going to polls or something. And they convicted a couple people under wire fraud and the Supreme Court just reversed those convictions. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. I ha uh, did they hear the DACA case? Uh, I think they've heard some of the DACA cases. I'm trying to remember um, what they have or have not heard, but possibly, yeah. Senators being elected and nominated versus the states. That's 17th Amendment, yeah. 17th Amendment changed it from direct election to, uh, or changed it from appointment to direct election. So, yeah, that's the 17th Amendment. Good stuff. So, until I'm going to hang up the stream, but I want to thank the 128 of you who are watching, 129 of you who are watching. Um, again, just give the same disclaimers I gave at the, the start for those of you who might have started late, just so they're here. Um, disclaimers are um, the video is original. The first minute and a half where there's no audio is original. The audio has been modified to be enhanced. Uh, it was originally one channel and it was distorted. I ran through an auto audio processor to clean it up. It was much better for it. Um, but I just wanted to make it clear that the audio has been modified to make it a little bit better for the record. Um, again, this was obtained through an open records request under Wisconsin law. So it was lawfully obtained, um, just for the record, in case you wanted to know. And don't use Fiverr, I suppose, for transcription requests if you're on a tight time schedule. Because originally this was supposed to be, originally I got this two days ago, and I sent it to Fiverr for a transcript, and they didn't get it to me in time, and I'm very sad. I was supposed to have a transcript, so it would be really good, but alas, no. We'll be back on Sunday around 11, 30, 12 for our weekly streaming. Otherwise, I'm going to kill the stream. It's been a pleasure, guys. Till later, my friends. Bye.